Okay, I'm going to talk about developing speed. So, in my last video, I talked about how when you're a baby, you're not strong enough to stand up. And the way you're able to stand up is when you develop the strength to be able to stand up. And then you're able to walk. When you get stronger, then you, you can run. When you get stronger, and then you can jump when you get even stronger. Now, if you want to jump higher, you need to get stronger. If you want to run faster, you need to get stronger. And the other factor that's important is the strength to weight ratio. So you want to maximize how much muscle you have and minimize how much fat you have. Now, depending on what you want to be fast at, um, muscular proportions are going to vary on what you want. If you want to be fast at bicycling, you want to be as lean as possible, but you're going to want all your muscle mass in your legs and you're not going to want it in your arms because it's not going to help you at all. Um, same thing with sprinting. It's not, it's a little bit beneficial to have strong arms, to have a strong upper body, but not overly developed like a bodybuilder. That, that muscle mass is just going to slow you down. So fat slows you down. Um, muscle helps you. So you want to, it's the same as bodybuilding, same as anything. You want to, as much muscle mass as possible, minimum body fat as possible for speed. Also, skill in what you're doing. And I'm, that's where we're going to talk about neuro, neurological ability and how to train that. Um, and along with your skill and your technique in speed in particular and strength, flexibility is very important. Because the, the more flexible you are, the better you know, technique you're going to have for, for running. You want to be able to open up your hips really well and get that perfect stride. So flexibility is very important. And that could be developed through strength training. If I try to touch my toes, I can't touch my toes. But if I put a heavy barbell and do stiff leg deadlifts, it's going to bring me down and increase my flexibility as long as I train through a full range of motion. Now, neurological ability, it has a lot to do with speed. So if I'm sprinting, my neurological ability is my ability to recruit all my muscle fibers in my body to be able to explode. It definitely is going to help to have white muscle fibers to be able to run a short distance. If I'm a sprinter trying to run 40 meters, 100 meters, I'm going to want to have white muscle fibers and a really high neurological ability. But on the other side of things, if I want to be good at marathon running, if I want to be really fast at marathon running, one, the extra muscle mass is going to slow me down because it's going to require more oxygen. So I actually want to minimize um, my body mass completely and minimize body fat as well. So really good high level marathon runners are very small. They're just very small individuals because it doesn't require as much energy to be able to uh, feed you know, oxygen to your body and everything. And there's not as much of a toll on your body. So you become much more efficient at that activity. It all comes down to efficiency with speed. And then how do you train yourself to be more efficient? Neurological training. And the best way to do that is with weight training. If you look at running, the exercise, the work comes in through gravity, just like everything we do. Gravity, I'm 255 pounds. Gravity's pushing my body weight downwards, straight down. But when I'm running, I'm running this way. So the resistance is still this way though. It's, it's downwards and I'm running forward, okay? So it's not nearly as much resistance as if I jump upwards, straight into the sky. Because that's where gravity is. Gravity's pulling me straight down to the ground. So if I try to jump away from the earth, that is going to work out my body, develop more neurological ability, better, far better than, than running, even sprinting. 
if I did a high jump. Now, you cannot sustain that um, like you can with sprinting. Sprinting, you can sustain it uh, for a more extended period of time. Whereas when you jump in the air, it's very short. But that's how you develop neurological ability is through short, explosive movements with less resistance than you're able to handle. So in the squat, I might be able to squat 600 pounds, but I want to do a much lighter weight with more speed and explosion to develop neurological ability and do a lot more repetitions. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to fire um, the uh, fire as many muscle fibers as possible, but I'm not trying to fatigue them. Uh, I'm just trying to recruit all the muscle fibers in this explosive training. And the most explosive, fast athletes in the world are Olympic weightlifters, by far. They are the fastest, most explosive athletes. So a great way to train your neurological ability is through Olympic weightlifting. But you don't have to tie yourself to the movements because it's very highly skilled movements. A snatch is very highly skilled movement. You don't need to learn the snatch to get the benefits of Olympic weightlifting. Um, what you need to do is I would recommend a much lighter weight than you're capable of and doing lots of sets of singles or doubles. And so say that you can clean and jerk 300 pounds, you'd want to use 150 pounds and do um, eight to 10 sets of one to two repetitions with 30 second breaks in between. So again, the resistance in the clean and jerk is perfectly aligned to gravity. Gravity's pushing downwards. I'm trying to get the weight upwards. So the resistance is proper. And when I do a clean and jerk, um, it starts out, I'm down here, and it starts out with a leg drive. My arms are straight. It starts out with a leg drive. And then when I get the weight above my knees, my hips come forward, and then I shrug the weight up. I can go up onto my toes. That's getting the weight as high as possible. And then I can just catch it with a, a power clean right here. And then I want to use my hips. This is getting all your whole entire body in the movement to explode it overhead. Okay, we're developing explosive power. We're, ex we're developing speed. And the key is you want to do as fast as possible. So in the power clean, you don't necessarily have to go from the floor. So you don't have to do the leg drive. You could start with that forward bent over motion right above the knees and just explode upwards. Catch it, just catch it right there, really easy. And then I'm gonna use my hips to explode. I'm not trying to use my arms to press it. I'm trying to use my hips, boom, to explode it over overhead. Okay. Here. Boom, boom. It's just explosive movement. I don't want to do a lot of reps because we're not trying to fatigue the muscle. We're not trying to, you know, when you, when you want to recruit all the muscle fibers in a movement, you want to do as many repetitions so that more and more and more and more muscle fibers are recruited into that movement. But when you do explosive movements, what you're trying to do so you're trying to train yourself to fire as many muscle fibers as possible all at once. That's what you're trying to do. Okay. If you do repetitions, it's going to extend it. You're going to recruit those muscle fibers, but you're not training yourself to recruit all the muscle fibers at one time. And that's what we want to do when we're, we're doing explosive training for speed specifically. That's how you become fast. It's a neurological ability and you're born with it. It's just like your IQ. You're born, born with a certain IQ, but you could do a lot with that IQ. There's a lot, you can't raise it. You cannot raise your IQ. Whatever you're born with, that's what God gave you. Just like how tall you are, that's what God gave you. That's what you got to work with, but you could do a lot with what God gave you.